Hey, what's up everybody? Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on with leasing. We got another question to do. And the question is, how much would you have to sell an asset for in five years in a perfect market if you buy it today for $50,000 and lease it every three months for $2,514 for five years? Interest rate is 8% compounded quarterly and the lease payments are made at the beginning of each quarter. Now, before getting into this question, I want to make a comment about these lease payments being made at the beginning of each period. Now, lots of textbooks, lots of profs don't even write this and they just assume lease payments are always made at the beginning of each period. It's kind of like if you're ever paying rent to someone, the rent payments are usually made at the beginning of each month. So you may just want to follow up with your professor about that, that if you see a leasing question, and it's not specified whether the lease payments are made at the beginning of each period, do you just assume that they are? And your prof would be able to tell you that. So in this question, it is specified that it's made at the beginning of the period, but sometimes it won't be specified and a textbook will assume that it is. So just be aware of that. Now, moving on to the question, if you remember in the previous question, when we dealt with a perfect market, we said that the MPV of the buying has to be equal to the MPV of the leasing. Basically, you should be indifferent about going either route. There shouldn't be an advantage to either option. So notice that we're given information for both buying the asset and leasing it. So let's make a timeline for both. So let's have a timeline for buying and then let's have a timeline for leasing. Well, for buying, if we were to buy this asset, what are we told? Well, we're gonna buy the asset for $50,000 in time zero. That's gonna be a negative cash flow. And then we're going to sell it for some kind of amount in five years. Now, we don't know the amount that we're going to sell it for. So let's just put an X there. That's actually what we're solving for in this question. So that is the timeline for buying the asset. Now, what about leasing? Notice that we are told that if you were to lease the asset, you would lease it every three months for a payment of $2,514. So every quarter year, you're going to be receiving a lease payment and the lease payments are made at the beginning of each quarter. So the lease payments would start at time zero. So this would be $2,514. And then the next lease payment would be in three months or a quarter year. If we keep this uh, timeline in terms of years, Next uh, lease payment in three months, same thing as a quarter year. So that would be 2,514. And then at the half year mark, at the six year mark, 2,514, et cetera, et cetera, all the way to five years. However, the last lease payment is not going to be at the five year mark. It's going to be three months before that five year mark because this here would represent the last quarter of the timeline and the lease payments are made at the beginning of each quarter. So the 2,514 would be at like the four year, three fourths mark, three months before that five year mark. So these are the two timelines for buying and leasing. And basically the present value of both of these timelines has to equal, the MPV of the buying has to equal the MPV of the leasing. Well, notice that the MPV of the buying we can't figure out right now because we have this unknown variable, the amount that we're gonna sell the asset for in five years. However, we can figure out what the MPV of the leasing is because we have all of the cash flows. So the PV, is what we're actually going to be solving for the future value notice that other than these payments there's no other cash flow happening in time five so the fv is just zero the payment is the lease payment 2514 what's the interest rate going to be 
Well, we're given an interest rate here, it's 8%. However, that is an APR and it's compounded quarterly. So we got to divide that by four and that would give us 2%. And this here represents the effective quarter year rate or the effective three month rate. And that is the rate that we would use to discount these lease payments because these lease payments are being made every three months. So we need an effective three month rate. Those uh, PMT, I and N variables always have to have the same frequency. So this I here would be two. And then uh, what's the N? How many lease payments are there gonna be? Well, we're gonna be receiving these lease payments for five years. And how many quarter periods are there in one year? How many three month periods? Well, there's four of them. So five times four would give us 20. So that in total, there's gonna be 20 of these lease payments happening. So this N is gonna be 20. And since these lease payments are made at the beginning of each quarter, you got to make sure your calculator is in BGN mode. This is an annuity due. And when you compute that PV, you end up getting $41,929.65, $41,929.65. So that there represents the MPV of the leasing. So if we were to lease this uh, asset out, that would be the present value of all the lease payments. So let's move on to the MPV of the buying. So the MPV of the buying is going to be what? It's going to be this negative 50,000 in time zero that's happening plus the amount that we're selling the asset for. However, we're selling that asset in five years. So we have to discount that amount back to time zero because we're dealing with net present value. So what we would do is we would discount it by this effective rate, this effective three month rate. Um, so it would be 1.02, this has to be in decimals. And how many three month periods are there in five years? Well, we calculated that to be 20. So we got to discount this back by 20 three month periods to time zero at an effective three month rate of 2%. So the MPV of the buying is just this general equation here for this specific scenario. And we know that the MPV of the buying is usually going to be negative because we're spending a lot of money in time zero, and then the asset is going to depreciate and we're going to be able to sell it for an amount less than what we bought it in the future. So the MPV of the buying has to equal the negative value of the PV of the leasing. Right, because if it is a negative value that's gonna be less than this, so if the MPV of the buying is like negative, I don't know, 60,000, then we know that our lease payments are not going to cover our true costs. So the MPV of the buying has to equal this amount here, the MPV of the leasing, but the negative amount because the MPV of the buying is always going to be negative. So now we just have to solve for that X in this equation so we can bring this negative 50,000 over. So negative $41,929.65 plus positive 50,000 gives us $8,070.35. That's still equal to X over 1.02 to the power of 20. If we put this over one, we can now cross multiply. So one times X is just X. And then that's gonna equal 80,070 or 35 times 1.02 to the power of so when you do that calculation, you end up getting $11,992.12. So that there is your final answer. So that's how much you would have to sell the asset for in five years in a perfect market in order for the MPV of the buying to match the MPV of the leasing, in order for the leasing to take care of your true cost. Now, another note I wanna make is you could have also did this step here in your financial calculator, 
Because if you think about it, you're just present valuing this x here, this future value amount, and this is going to be the present value. So you could have inputted the present value to be uh, $8,070.35. The n is uh, 20. The uh, interest rate is 2. No other payment happening in between and then you're just calculating that future value that x here and if you were to do that calculate that future value you should get that same amount eleven thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars and twelve cents but either way that is the answer that's how much you should be selling the asset for in five years